views and opinions expressed on Geeks Under the Influence are that of the panelists and not of our sponsors, Amazon.com and TeePublic. Parental discretion is advised. Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special features 1990s alt country darlings, the old 97s. And I was like, yay! Or like Kevin Bacon. Or Kevin like, Bacon. Like, from the 80s. Kevin like, Bacon, like, yeah. play. Mm, who are they aiming for? Yeah, mm, see. let me see. Mm. You know, you have all those 17 year old kids that are big old 97 stands. Yeah. <laughs> all three of them. All three of They're them. They're all yeah. from like Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it has made it tough because. It's really hard to really realize when things happened in the past now. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know what happened in 2022. I don't know. What, I don't know if it might have been 2020 when it happened. I, I do have. A, I do struggle with that. I do struggle. Yeah. Like, is that this year? Oh, it's it's is a that... big ball of three years of just <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like nothing. Nothing actually happened. It either happened three years ago or two months ago and later. Like there's no. In, in my <laughs> mind, January 6th happened every year. Since <laughs> the election, uh, since like 2016, there's been a January 6th. Well, you've had that year. convenient, you know, court here, you know, the hearings to yeah. help remind you of it. So mm. you're like, that was yeah. last this like no. yeah, they clearly had to have ago. been this January if they're still holding exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. These, these yeah. Oh no, no. T- t- two, two years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Oh, Great. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I like that. My response. I've been talking with people about you know favorite movies of the year and. I've had some people say, well, the Marvel movies have been kind of weak this year. I'm like, no, the Spider-Man movie was pretty good this year. The, the uh, far, far uh, No Way Home yeah. from 2022. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're, talking yes. about like, yes. we're talking about like two weeks before 2022. So. It's still, yeah. It was still the big, like, big guest release of 2021, and it landed on Christmas. Come on, man. Like, you can't. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Uh, Actually, we got a, uh, a just a, a cornucopia of rich media this year. Uh, in a way that even I don't really fully appreciate until you look back on the year and you're like, wow, we had some some freaking bangers this year. Yeah. Forgot that Stranger Things came out again this year. Yeah, that was this year. year. Yeah. But that's what this episode is going to be all about. Old men trying to remember. <laughs> Man, I yes. think that was this I year. Remember. We need some member berries, folks. <laughs> yeah, some member berries. berries. <laughs> no, this is the... Uh, Year in Review 2022 episode of Geeks Under the Influence. We're going to be talking about our favorite movies, favorite TV shows, uh, memories from 2022 mm-hmm. uh, for the end of the year, what we liked, what we didn't like from 2022. So uh, buckle up and get your member berries ready. Yeah, because we go. are <laughs> hitting Year in Review from Geeks Under the Influence. Welcome! Woo! Did what, y'all what time that shit it? out? That was kind of scary. What day is it? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this year had some really great parts of this year. Also, it's just like I don't, I don't know. Like I'm just yeah. waiting. I'm just waiting for the end days at this yeah. point. Like, yeah, just, something's so that's gotta not, give. That's not just you know all the depress like the the constant end of the world from the uh, beginning of this year. It's not just that. It's just you're you're getting old and you're starting to realize. That you're getting old. So welcome, my <laughs> friend. I have been holding this seat for you for yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> there, no, Keeping there, it warm. <laughs> there is a calm that kind of comes over you when you reach a certain age where you realize that you don't matter anymore. Not at uh, all. Yeah, that you're not special. You're not special. Nobody's looking out for you anymore. <laughs> like even the even the movies and TV shows that you come to know and love, you start bitching about and oh, it's the fucking new bullshit. Yeah. You're in your 40s. The cartoon movie that you are watching isn't focused on you anymore. <laughs> you don't even know uh, what the culture is, old man. I don't care about this this teen and her problems. Good. Because you're in your 40s. You're, you're not weird. You're, you're not the target yeah, audience the anymore. Target. It would be so creepy if you did. <laughs> right? Yeah, I you think those, those demos are like, the, yeah. you know, like late or early 20s to like mid 30s. So we're out of a lot of the demos of what they're targeting for advertising or anything like that. So if we complain, we don't fucking matter. Yeah, we don't. Uh, yeah. They don't care. <laughs> Shut up, old timer. But the thing is, it's like, give your mo- give money to your children to go see us. Yeah. You, know, you can fuck yeah, up. Exactly. Like they, there, something didn't get communicated between the last time this happened and now about like, no, this is why our parents gave us money and they told us to fuck off and go do the thing. No, I think what it is is that there's this like, 
You know when you're in line at a gas station and there's the old fucker that has lottery tickets at the front that like scratchers <laughs> and it's taking 20 <laughs> minutes to go through and everybody else is like, just go. Yeah. That's yeah. what's happening with cultures. The boomers have scratchers uh, and they are waiting at the front of the line. They refuse to relinquish control of just pop culture, business, just the world in general. And so Gen X is like, it's bi- we are like 10 years past when we should have taken over like, this like, Come on, guy. We, we like, gave you, let's get this We going. gave you Top Gun, man. No, just no, let our oh, shit through. Hold on. I think I got one more scratcher in my pocket. <laughs> and Gen oh, X God. is at the point where now the millennials are like, our shift's about to start, actually. And Gen X yeah. is like, so just fuck us then, I guess, yeah, right? How weird is that? How weird? It, like, Gen X, it's, it's gone. We are no longer the main characters at all. Gen millennials X, are the adult. The adult main characters. No, Gen X has always been Meg from Family Guy. Just like, <laughs> shut up, Gen X. Don't go sit in your room and listen to fucking records. Well, that's the other reason why we haven't taken over the uh, reins either, because we don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> we just got used to fucking off and li- watching movies and like listening to records and like delving into pop culture. And so now that that's gone too, but we don't get the other part, like the, the rich <laughs> the riches affluence. and yeah, the affluence. We're like, oh, so just. So just not so cool. So I just I just work at Lowe's. You get yeah. to have twenty thousand dollars worth of Funko Pops to show for it. So, <laughs> right? so it evens a, out. A balance there, yeah. It's a retirement package. <laughs> the Beanie Babies of Gen X is uh, a <laughs> God damn it. Pop. That is so true. It's it so is. fucking sad. It is. Yeah. Mm. They're gonna have probably the same retail value, a uh, resale value as Beanie Babies did. Don't tell Scotty that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he has a room with a wall of them. So yeah, no, yeah, no. it's, it's a lot okay of to have pops. a hobby. You just don't expect to make any. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, I still think That's they look cool, hobby, but if you're like, business. this is my retirement fund, you might be in trouble. I do that with my comics, where I'm like, ooh, this comic's worth eighty dollars. I'm never <laughs> selling that comic. That's not going yeah, anywhere. Yeah, if you had it squished between plexiglass and a yeah, right. in your vault. I don't want to be like uh, in a Mission Impossible thing, like on razor wires, like hanging from the ceiling, <laughs> turning a page with tweezers, uh, just in case I, I rip it or um, something. Actually, that's more like National Treasure. Yeah, it's National uh, Treasure. Sorry, Nick Cage. Head to toe uh, latex. You know. Wait, wait. Yeah. Which National Treasure? Because there's now a. We got to steal another the appearance of Wolverine. Stop. Another generation National Treasure. I, so you, you got to tell us what you're talking about. There's no Nick oh, Cage. Speaking I of the care. worst of 2022, I tried to watch the first episode of the, the National dude, Treasure show. No, no, it's. Fucking garbage. Yeah, and like, it's not look, good. Let that suck because the other series that came out pretty close, Willow. I I I love it. That's what I'm saying. So it's National a Treasure, true joy. National Treasure, you can suck. I don't care as long as Willow is good because I don't have a connection with National Treasure. So are you the way I do Willow, Willow currently? What's that? Are you watching Willow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. And I much rather this way than switched. Th- yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Just like. Willow sucks, but that National Treasure series <laughs> is charming. Really got me. Yeah. Oh. yeah. No, Willow's a blast. An absolute blast. I'm really excited. I'm kind of bummed that like, we we're winding things down on regular releases of the episode because I remember even like two or three years ago, there were being mention of a series starting and Smash being like, when Willow comes out, man, I got to be on that. I got to be on that episode. <laughs> now I'm like, yeah, so about that episode. Um, yeah, it doesn't sorry. finish until like the end of January. Uh, like, yeah. Ugh. Sorry. This close. <laughs> sorry. Maybe it'll be a key father. Swing and a miss. Right. <laughs> the, the Q3 show can be all Willow all the time. Right. Now now that we're like a uh, quarter of the way through the episode, <laughs> let me introduce the panel. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah who's uh, to real quick, uh, from my co host on uh, Smack My Pitch Up, when we eventually decide to start doing episodes again, uh, Tondi is here. Someday soon. Hey, kids. Hey. <laughs> uh, we've got Mouths of Mal- 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 Madness and Beautiful Disasters co-host, Fuck You Hunter. What's up, bitches? And of course, my uh, partner in crime here and the host of uh, Mouths of Madness, we got Lowdown Brown. What's going on, everybody? Yay. Yay. I'm excited. So I've yet to start watching Willow. It's on the list. I just have not started watching it yet. I kind of want to go back and watch the movie first. I feel well, like I know that's a good time. you like to binge if you can, so. Yeah, I, I, like, I like to at least get like three or four, maybe five episodes in. Like as if it's releasing weekly before I start it, that sure. way I'm always kind of behind it. You know what I mean? Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so because oh, yeah. limited time to watch TV, so when I if I can, you know, etch out like three hours or two hours, you know, me knock out like three episodes. Man, you know? 2022 was the year of like Val Kilmer vehicles that get remade, and then they have to Holy like shit. do some kind of like homage so to Val is Kilmer. This yeah. Taylor, if you mention. Val Kilmer about the Willow series because I was wondering. I mean, if he he's was not in it. It's not like old, like almost dead Val Kilmer okay. as Matt oh, Mardigan. Okay, 
Like, no, but they do a thing in it, and I won't mention what. Yeah, yeah, that, okay. that kind of like pays proper respect to the character. Okay. You know, that That's he's brought cool. up lovingly cool. and often in the series. Gotcha. So gotcha. Uh, the man who is just loves the Willow series. I mean, because you talked about it. I feel like the first episode. Yeah. Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah. Yeah. The first episode is good. Look, it, you don't have to do much to please me with a Willow series. You have little fucking people running around doing magic. <laughs> and then you got big people making fun of the little people and doing magic less good. And then that's it. That's all you have to fucking do. And I'm ha- and, and then there's like fucking, they have to go on a journey of discovery. Great. Mm. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. yeah. It doesn't have to be anything all that <laughs> <laughs> impressive. <laughs> like, are there monsters? Yeah. The wand shown at a point. Yep, great, done. Gotcha. <laughs> hey, I, I was all about Xenon, the legendary Hercules adventures in the '90s. So I'm, I'm down. Man, for you it. try to watch those. Hercules more than Xena uh, does not age the best. It's just that's awkward. Xena still has some kind of like kitschy charm to it, mm-hmm. to a degree. Yeah, because she's badass. Well, it's also yeah, Lucy Lawless. Lucy Lawless, oh, yeah. Lawless dude. Come on, man. Charming. Uh, no, we we had some pretty cool stuff this year. We did, we did, we did. I, um, I agree. The best movie category. Mm. I'm definitely intrigued to see who is wrong and didn't pick the Weird Al movie. Uh, but... So, three of the four? Yeah, three Probably. of the four. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. Like, the Weird Al was amazing. Don't get me wrong. Very fun movie. But That was there... actually a hard one for me. I was, it was hard until I was like, no, it has to be this one. But, um, hmm. I, I mean, I'm interested. What, what did everybody pick for best movie for 2020? I, I feel like everybody knows what my best movie is because I've been selling it all year long. So there's two things. There's a best movie and a best cinematic experience, but that's the move. That's the movie. So I'm going with the best cinematic experience. Uh huh. Top Gun Maverick was my <laughs> favorite movie. Tony and I are on the wow. same Over fucking here. page with that. <laughs> really? I was cinematic experience. Yes. Now I struggled between cinematic experiences uh, for me personally, and this is like best movie then best movie with a bias to it was uh, Batman. Batman was very the good. Batman that I, that was, was really fucking good. And I would really say fucking good. that might be, as much as I really did enjoy Wakanda Forever, um, as, as far as like superhero movies goes, the Batman might be the best superhero movie of the year. I, I, I do think that is true. It yes. would be, that would be true for me if it were tighter. Yeah, I, I feel it's like a little, it's a little yeah. long-winded for yeah. sure. Yeah, but in this, but like, again, in the same instance, even though I do love both movies, Wakanda Forever was a little like long-winded at times too. With things, yeah, no, so, definitely. In order to pay homage too, but it yeah, still made yeah. it long-winded. You know, oh, definitely. No, I think I, I agree. I think that the, the Batman was probably the best superhero movie. Of the uh, yeah, I think my favorite superhero movie was Doctor Strange. But, Doctor Strange but, is but, campy fun, but, but I, the, I don't the know. Batman was probably the best superhero movie. Of- I got one out of Left Fucking Park, and it just came on Netflix, and I raved about it when I saw it. I loved. I love fucking Bullet Train. I'm sorry, but I finally watched Bullet it. Bullet Train that, is that hilarious. Is fun that film. was that was a movie that I was just like, I know there's probably stuff that might I've seen that might be a little bit better than this, but I'm having so much fucking fun watching this it movie. Tries so. so hard though. Did I it, tell you about is. that? Or did you just... well, and that's the thing. It's that? fun, but it's not great it's not it's, dude, it's, that movie is that, a blast though no, yeah no it, i agree i enjoyed it too but it it just it's doing t- it's doing like too maybe, much to but that's what maybe it is is that like, i just needed something i needed yeah. something not so fucking heavy like i just like it's like they yeah. just don't it's give like, a shit I, the director's like i really like guy Ritchie, but i'm not guy Ritchie. yeah and that's what that's what bullet train was <laughs> yeah. right like i mean like, <laughs> it's like know? it's like guy Ritchie by way of um australian dude or i'm sorry uh new was new zealand dude Taika. Taika. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, because you're, like, that movie not... definitely does have like snatch, lock, stock, f- or, you know, rock and roll of feels. Well, it's got it. the ensemble assassin uh, thing going, which, you know, you got smoke and aces yeah. and shit where, I mean, th- we've had this movie before. Bro, but, and, and, but and, Ryan Reynolds cameo though. Come was, on. Oh, great. Was great. Come on. I that also was learned I'm getting an, kind of impatient with movies over two hours. I know that sounds funny, but I think that was one of the other all things. feel that way a little bit. Yeah. I think you need to really properly justify why you're over two hours for me. Ding, ding, like, ding. Bullet Train, for example, that's an easy 90-minute movie if you yeah. really wanted it. And that's, yeah. they, they kept it 90 minutes. They yeah. didn't go yeah. over the, like, and for also, no a reason. a movie called Bullet Train, don't make that a long movie. <laughs> yeah. Bullet Train. And you know, yeah, right. you know who didn't get the memo on that? Damien Leone. That's what I'm going to say about Terrifier 2. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> It did not need to be two hours and ten minutes. Fuck that. I'll say the other one I had, I guess, is honorable mention or whatever like that, but everything everywhere all at once. That is my pick <laughs> yeah. for the best of the year. Uh, because we're, to we're talking that. about cinematic experience. 
Uh, I'm so glad I got the chance to see that in the theater because what they did for the, especially for the budget they had, yeah, that was just planning ahead, like intensely planning ahead to be able to pick up, like they did pick up shots where they just wandered around the city with this camera for months, and then compiled that for just a scene that was like twelve seconds. I, I think you saw it close to right after it opened, right? Yeah, right after it opened. See, I I didn't see it for probably about two or three weeks, and I'd heard everybody raving about it, and I went in and was still fucking blown away. I was like. Fuck, I was expecting to be, I had trusted sources that said it was good. Still wasn't expecting to be that level. It, no, it's a great experience. It's a great experience. It is, it hits so many different, like, emotional places for me. There's the generational trauma aspect of it that hits, and like, even as somebody that d- is definitely not somebody that can properly identify with the main characters. Like, this is like an immigrant couple that has a kid that is an Amer- like American sensibilities, but they don't. And that challenge of trying to understand one another. Uh, my, my mom was from Connecticut. Like, I, I don't, <laughs> yeah, that's not really something I have to worry about so much, but like, even so you do have an understanding of challenges between generations and there's enough, there's enough connective tissue in that story that everybody can at least relate to it to a degree. And it's hitting that it's hitting humor. It's hitting like, even the idea that the feeling of like pointlessness of the universe, the nihilistic nature of the, yeah. of the universe is hit very, very directly in this movie. It takes a lot for me to almost be crying, laughing. And there are a couple parts of that movie. I'm like, God, just like tears. Oh. I'm just laughing. I like lost it that first time I watched it. But then there's also moments that are like tear jerkingly emotional yeah. and like intense and powerful as fuck. Now, it, it, it's the Golden Globes, so it's not really that important, but I don't know if you saw who got nominated from that, but fucking short round. Uh, I know. Supporting and actor nomination. Him, he deserves it. Yeah. I like, he did a great job, which is he hasn't done anything like that. I think he was in production or something when they yeah, pulled he, him in. Yeah, he did a lot of behind the scenes stuff yeah. uh, at that mm-hmm. point, and he decided like two weeks before he put his hat in the ring for this movie to get back into acting, and then he put his hat, hat in the ring and was like, hey. Uh, this looks like a cool movie. And they're like, great, you're on, you're good. And then, yeah, gets nominated for shit because he's yeah, that's incredible. Awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. But everything, everywhere, all at once is proof that there's still original ideas that can yeah. that can exist and be successful. And from a studio, I mean, a twenty four that like huh. more is horror related. Like you, you go, okay, I, I trust them well, now with it, their it, horror it, properties. No, when, but... when it's Oscar with a non horror related property, right? In Moonlight, so yeah. But I'm just saying. But I'm just saying that it, it is known for horror, but they have a lot of other indie style. Yeah. yeah, very indie style. But before we leave this category, there is uh, one more movie that I want to put up as the as the third pillar of movies for 2022, which is uh, RRR. Yes, holy <laughs> shit! Yeah, that is such a fucking good time. Also, just like this was the year of roller coaster movies that broke out of the. Um, kind of uh, studio IP framework that we had been living in for so long. And RRR was a pleasure. It was, but it was like, uh, it was a spectacle like Top Gun, but a, a completely different sensibility is represented, like completely different. And there is nothing cynical in it. It's just about dude bro love and, and complete, ridiculousness it's guy love it's guy <laughs> love it is 100 the it makes you realize how much of like and i'm not saying that there isn't toxic masculinity in like other cultures outside of america mm-hmm. but like the things that oh, are worse. like no homo kind of shit in the u.s is not a problem elsewhere it's like dudes being like i love you like let's hold hands you know yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's not seen as any kind of weird issue whatsoever in other countries the United States, you try to pull that shit with the wrong person, they're going to be like, what the fuck, man? Uh, except our group of friends. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but yes, the, the level of fraternal brotherhood that these dudes build and then break and then build and then destroy like the uh, entire British Empire with the strength of their mighty thews, it is, and this movie is long as shit, too. It's like, yeah, like four hours. And it does about. not feel like a long as shit movie, because it is just... I just want to rewatch it. Yeah, it is about incredible. It. I need to watch it. It's, it's, love... it's a group watch. It's They're definitely breaking a into a song about, movie. like, you're the most powerful fighter I've ever met, and, like, I'm a better person for having you as a friend and my brother from another yeah. mother. And yeah. just, like, 
There's a freaking dance battle to dance save battles, the universe. Yeah, it's, 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 it's called tigers, RRR. Like they unleash tigers at one. Like it's fucking oh, wild. Oh, the, the, the shitty CGI animals. <laughs> it yeah, is amazing, incredible. They did R. It's called RRR. Yeah. RRR, and it's on uh, Netflix, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it is, it's a blast. That, it that's the one that has the guy going to the crowd and just beat the shit out of people the for whole like crowd. Yeah, the whole it, crowd. It, it, like there's like what like. 100 people pissed the fuck off at least. Oh, no, there's like 2,000 okay. people. But I'm just saying, he goes in there and just, all right, I'm going to punch he, you, punch you, punch you. Terminators through the crowd. It yeah. is, oh, it's such, it is such an amazing movie. It it's got Ray amazing. Stevenson in it, too, <laughs> randomly. <Yeah. laughs> the streak? The Punisher is in the there. The Punisher is yeah. in yeah. there as like a oh, British that officer. Ray yeah. That, okay. Yeah, and who's the guy I'm thinking of? I'm thinking, I'm thinking of Ray Stevens. Who's the guy who was the street? Yeah, Ray Stevens. Yeah, I'm thinking of Stevens. Oh, yeah, they called him the street. Yeah. Look at that, look at it. He <laughs> came to his flea. Yeah, that's the reference I'm throwing at. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, RR for sure definitely needs a mention. That's such a blast. I need to watch the, the Bollywood movie that just dropped on Disney, which is like their cinematic universe, superhero universe that they're opening up. That just I dropped. saw that some movies, had, I didn't see where they dropped, but I did see that some Indian movies had come out with the uh... more and more the streaming services are starting to bring in um like titles from outside of the states and i'm here for it like i've, I've never been bothered by reading subtitles and like talk about you if you want to find some original content break out of just the u.s movie market yeah and you're gonna find some different takes can we throw out there real quick just my top streaming movie went on just streaming service and you know harder they fall it was probably so much fun probably yeah it came on netflix like but by far of all the streaming movies that come out, top notch. You want to do a western that has like a like an exploitation kind of vibe to it? Uh, I mean, fuck, and done very very yeah. well shot, like pretty movie. That's yeah. beautiful. It it, it didn't. Oh, White Town is literally clean. a town painted white. <laughs> it's like very clean western. Yeah, very <laughs> clean, <laughs> bright, like it was very western. it was very clean, and some of the dialogue I feel like was a little off step. But I enjoyed it. I need to watch it again. Yeah, because enough people. Loved I enjoyed it, it but there was saying, it wasn't. It's not a perfect. Movie. How many movies that premiere on a streaming site are you just like, hey, you should check this shit out? Because it happens from time to time. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. once in a while, I saw one on uh, Netflix called The Immaculate Room that I thought was really impressive for just a a, a two hander, random two hander, uh, in a room, nice. which is how you do cheap movies. Yep, <laughs> two handers in a room. That's like trying to figure out. I, I have a couple ideas for scripts that I'm um, working on that are actually considering having no budget as part of the the, the framework of the movie. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you gotta, but you know, stop, and sometimes having those limits is what creates something interesting and different, like the movie Coherence that yeah. came out a few years ago that has literally no budget. Like there's no, it's shot bad. Uh, like you can tell they didn't do a lot of takes. I think uh, uh, the biggest name in it is the dude that played Xander and Buffy. Uh, <laughs> it's like the biggest name they got. Um, and, and it's a great little film. Great little indie. Well, what was it that came out last year on Hulu? Uh, Boss Level? Yeah, Boss, Boss Level. Level was awesome. But that's what I'm saying. That was like if you were, it was like Free Guy if you were stoked about being in the Grand Theft Auto yeah. universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think as far as for movies that went like straight to streaming. Pray. Yeah, I was gonna say pray. I would take pray. pray I would, yeah. No, I'm saying I pray. would take pray over that West. Harder they fall. Yeah. I, you yeah. know what? Yeah, I would too. I, would, I, I, just, I just had the thing where oh yeah, that was awesome <laughs> this year. Yeah, yeah. Whoops. Was, yeah. And I did. Pray I, was amazing. I did really enjoy the new Hellraiser, but like pray was like fucking. Yeah. No. I can, was, I will. I will say <laughs> pray does take a step over our Harley. I completely so forgot that about that. You're mad you didn't get the opportunity to spend twelve bucks to yeah. go to the theater. To <laughs> That's see what it. I'm saying. And see it on IMAX. Yeah. Of seeing it on your fifty inch oh, television. Or whatever. That would have been a, such a good IMAX movie, dude. Oh Especially yeah. Especially with the noises and the stomp. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, it've been so good in IMAX. God now. damn it! Now I fuck. How the fuck did I forget that movie? Yeah. Yeah. Pray definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A good call there. Uh, we also have a best series. We were talking about one uh, oh, at the very beginning uh, of this episode, for sure. Yeah, I mean, we, we I had to call out the last episode we did with Andor. That fucking show was amazing. Andor was so good. So good. But, like, you called out the one, like, I forgot it came out this year. Yeah, fucking Stranger Things season four was badass. Yeah, Stranger Things. Fucking awesome. It, there were a couple, 
uh, challenges I had with the last like two. Well, season two is probably the weakest season, even though it's really good. It, it's just, but it, it, comparatively, it is. Yeah, season I, I three, I was it. worried that even though it was a good season, I was worried that if it got any more kind of sidelined with kitchen stuff, uh, that it, it kitsch, uh, it would be not as <laughs> kitchen much stuff. Fun. <laughs> kitsch, kitsch uh, yeah, then uh, yeah. I wouldn't be as into it. Before, kind of corrected a couple things and got back. And gave you so much like. Th- that it was a perfect uh for me to me a perfect example of how to move a story forward while focusing in the past there's a lot of that in season four mm-hmm. where they're you know because the, the reason where we're at is because of the past but in order to find out what's going on they had, it was i thought that was a brilliant mm-hmm. just using that you know because a lot of times people they they muck that up yep you know and i just thought that was really clean and i'm not even gonna lie like i really 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 fucking dug wednesday it's so good. You know, it's it, so good. I watched the first couple episodes and I was not that impressed with it. I powered through that um, like nothing. It was just, I it, mm, it so didn't good. part of the fun of the Adams family was it was the the spooky people against the rest of the world that wasn't spooky. So when you put a spooky people in a spooky people place, that's against the whole town, that's against spooky people. Yeah, but then the spooky people are being shitty to the other spooky people. I'm like, you're, you're friends. <laughs> you so you mean like society? To- but that's no, how that that's how reality no, works. But, <laughs> then it kind of it, it did kind of take away from what the original like concept of the Adams family was trying to portray for me. Mm. But as things went along, you started to see that the, the they they were kids. They're all teens. That they're all gonna yes, you're gonna shit on each other. And what saved it for me was that there was a little bit of more bonding between the freakies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as the series went on, I saw it know? as every echelon of of, of freak or every. So like every group I look at now in high school was like a group that was technically extreme in, in the thing was what created the group, but like none of them knew how to exist in society outside of that that one thing. And I yeah. feel like in that school, everyone was a part of the freaky side, you know, or, or, or the monsters and all that. But they were still in their own group, and they didn't know how to exist outside of that one group without being a fucking asshole. I didn't like that they you know? made it normal that werewolves exist and shit like just people know that these creatures exist bug me like that was kind of the thing with adam's family is that everybody just kind of took them as just kind of a weird family because yeah i see what you're saying because they didn't okay believe that you know these supernatural creatures and stuff did actually exist so they're like now they're just i don't know they're really into uh, I don't know, like goth shit. I guess I don't know. Yeah, no, I I, I do. I, I can see what you're saying there. Yeah, yeah like if you go back and watch the original two, you're like, yeah, they just, they just thought they were fucking weird. But that being said, you know, I I still say that that was a complicated thing to kind of deal with as a fan of the original uh, series, and then also, of course, the 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 classic movies from the '90s. Well, you you don't like the uh, Tim Curry sequel? No, <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Oh, I just had to throw that in there. Um, <laughs> But uh, what was it? Was it like Daryl Hannah or something? Was was the mom? Uh, I or... don't. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah, yeah it, I just it was so it, bad. I just oh, it up the other day. Yeah, it was yeah. So bad. <laughs> well, okay. So that I can keep in my brain. That Daryl Hannah played. Yeah, uh, but... uh, played uh, Morticia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm remembering when my car- credit card bill is due. Apparently, <laughs> is uh, impossible. <laughs> that movie just offended you so much. I think. And that's what it was. You're <laughs> yeah. Like, what? <laughs> Uh, no, but like it, it did win me over at the end. I really did enjoy the series. Ultimately, um, I think um, uh, was it Jenna Ortega? Uh, Ortega yeah. is a blast to watch, um, especially that dance. I know everybody's all about the dance, but it was when she starts doing like the creepy hand shit. It was in fun. the dance. I'm done for. Yeah, it was. It was fun. It was. It was, and she like did that like last minute. I think she had like I watched an interview. She said like I didn't prep shit. Tim just like and she was like you know Tim Burton the director was like. I trust you got it. We don't need to go over it. And she's like, I haven't done anything. It's like two days away. She's so, like dynamite. So is this is this probably the, potentially the best thing Tim Burton's done in how many 15, years? Maybe um, I like Big Eyes. Sixteen was that? Big Eyes was a was decent. I liked Big Eyes. That's about um, ten and years Ms. ago. Peregrine, Miss Peregrine's cool cool for oh was that him? Children. That was, that yeah. was yeah. also about ten years ago. Yeah, was that ten years? It's 2022, bro. Back in my day. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, okay. this yeah. is probably the most yeah. positive feedback he's had on yeah. a property true. in a, I mean, a while. That's that's true. A while. That's, that's legit. Oh, yeah. what's his face? His fester was fun. You know what? He I was really I fucking was fun. Completely fine with that. Yeah. And I, I, Fred Armisen is a hit. Or a, 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 is a hit or a miss for me sometimes. Sometimes he's funny as shit. He was a uh, Portlandia, right? His, his yes. stand-up yeah. special, yeah. like stand-up from and documentary now musicians or whatever it's called, is it's just not funny. Yeah, I don't find it funny at all. 
Uh, but Portlandia shit that he did. Portlandia is fucking incredible. Hysterical. incredible. To, to me, his best co- contribution is documentary now because yes. if you've watched enough documentaries, they are dead the fuck on. And he that's where I think he works so well with th- that kind of show. Like he's, parody and yeah. satire, yeah. Um, another series that it ended the series, but God damn it went out hard. Fucking Ozark. Holy oh, yeah. shit. I forgot about Ozark uh, finishing this. Yeah, yeah. That, that shit was, yeah, that was a beast. Well, I, I'm going to jump over that one then. I also love Jason Bateman, so. And fucking that? Better Call Saul, like, finished up and. It did, but it, it hasn't been streaming yet, so. I, seen I understand, it. I, I understand. Seen it. But I'm just saying, one of my favorite ways the show ended was Breaking Bad, and he stayed with it with Better Call Saul, and you knew, like, you have cheat sheets. You already know what happens with Breaking Bad. But even with that, it still had a really strong finish. I mean, that is the reason I went into it, because I, they already had kind of announced when it started that it was going to lead up to when he meets Walter White. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm well, excited to see that ending. Yeah. Like that, or that, that merge of show. So <laughs> I've had many people tell me that it was fantastic. Um, my brother keeps trying to get me to watch Better Call Saul. And my son actually started watching Better Call Saul, so I know it's good. Very nice. Yeah. And I mean, nice you, recovery. You do have you have <laughs> some <laughs> solid cast in that movie in that series too. Throughout the from the start, you have a really strong cast too. That's that's yeah yeah. They, they, and then they just the blending around. of current day where it's in black and white, and then you know building mm-hmm. up to where he became Saul. Has that finale pretty much kind of interconnects the two. So yeah, now, yeah. there are, there are two more series that I definitely want to mention before we close out as far as best of. Uh, one just at least want to make a mention of. That it was a surprise out of nowhere was Little Demon. I really enjoyed that series. If you had not had a chance, it's an animated yeah. series on Hulu. Oh no, yeah, okay. It, I, I I've seen the you know thumbnail for it. I haven't I haven't watched it it's, yet. It's very much got Rick and Morty vibes all over it, but it it gets fucking dark as shit. And I mean like hmm. full nudity. I mean like the the mom is like a, is a like witch that fucked Satan and had the Antichrist, and and so she's still like and now they are trying to share custody of the daughter. Um, and she's, like, shoving shit up her vagina to, like, transport to hell and stuff. I mean, like, it, it gets what fucking... What the fuck? It okay. Gets... <laughs> All right, I might have to check this out. Like, this is, she's, yeah, she's this is a little it's crazy. It's a little crazy. Cutting off chicken heads to create pentagrams to, like... What was this called again? So... Little Demon. Little Demon. Little Demon. It's All fucking right. wild. Like, All I mean, right. I'm really surprised that this is stuff that I wouldn't even necessarily expect on Adult Swim that they're doing on, How like, many episodes? Uh... Nine or ten, like half hour episodes. It's pretty consumable, and uh, I apparently did pretty well. So hopefully there'll be a second season. But it's so much fucking fun and twisted as shit. Um, Satan can only come to Earth by and in, in getting in the body of a recently dead creature. So he's like a a chicken whose head is barely hanging on by a skin flap. At one point, oh. the head keeps falling over. He's nice. like a worm or like just dead bodies left and right. It's the Vatican sends an assassin to try to murder this girl, and this dude's just like, nothing I love more than murdering little <laughs> girls. It's fucking... Gr- yeah, it's very much worth a watch. Oh, uh, a few things. One, uh, and I forgot that this came out this year because of the time thing that we were talking about, but the Boy Season 3 yes. was yeah. oh, so well done. About that one. So well done. Yeah, so, yeah, so well done. Uh, <laughs> my favorite show this year was actually Primal. Um, I've heard got really good things about that. Primal is art. It is art. It is is just a, a wonder to behold. They are doing something with intention, and the execution is damn near flawless. Uh, highest recommendation for Primal. Basically, uh, animation that is uh, almost completely visually driven with no dialogue and just exquisitely violent. Because it's about the primal world of animals and cavemen or whatever. But mm-hmm. yeah, fantastic. Uh, also, and I did not get the chance to see anything beyond maybe the first three episodes because it was appearing on Hulu and I missed the cutoff. It actually, it no, it was Amazon. It stopped playing like as I finished the second or third episode. As I finished the third episode, they 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 had had it up for a month and it was at the end of the month. So that was the end of the month when I finished the third episode. But uh, Gangs of London is... It's it's from the creator that did the... Um, 
what are the movies that take place in Myanmar? The Raid. The Raid. Uh, the Raid oh. One and the Raid Two. Nice. I'm sorry. What? Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> like, hey. Uh, hey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> now, like, please tell me more. Yes, yeah. Yes, once yes, again, yes. would you like to know exquisitely more? Exquisitely <laughs> violent, and I think it's on. It's one of the, on, on one of the premium networks, and then you know plays on. And which one was that again? It might be Showtime. Okay. But what was the name of the show? Oh, Gangs of London. All right. Nice. Yeah. I think I, I like how we're all writing yeah. down notes of the yeah, show. Right. Those are re- I would, recommendations. Um, I made some notes just like just for recommendations, just for you know like honor, you know notable mentions or whatever. And like there's one I found by David Simon. We own this city. It's got John Bernthal. It's like supposed to be like a po- some people say it's like postscript to the wire, but it's not. It's based off a nonfiction book written about like one of the most corrupt pol- like police squad like group in. Oh, in, I, yeah, um, I remember seeing it's, the it's on pro, it's on HBO Max. It's really fucking good, and it's John Bernthal, dude. He brings it like every yeah, time, yeah. every fucking time. It's really good. I definitely recommend, che- recommend checking that out. And the biggest surprise to me that I think I would love and follow along just as much as I did, not being in the restaurant industry, is the fucking bear. That fucking bear. show crushed, bro. It fucking good crushed, call. dude. That like, was a fucking fantastic. I did not expect to just like just, just focus. I was like, <laughs> like bam, bam, bam. I, Plow through that fucking yeah, shit. Everybody's dude. been talking that up. Yeah. Well, what I love is that all all the people that have worked in restaurants before pointed to the same exact fucking moment of the bear as an example of okay, okay, they've done their research. Is when he's sitting on the pallets in the back, uh, having a conversation with someone, and he's got like the to-go soup co- t- container, like the catering cup that he's poked a hole in and put a straw in, is using as a drinking cup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, and everybody that's worked in restaurants is like, ooh, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh, they know um, what they're doing, and. Final mention of a show that I just love the fuck out of is House of Dragon. Fucking yeah, that's what I was about to throw in. Is Gotta throw that in there for everybody that hated the fuck out of how Game of Thrones ended. House and are like, Dragon, I, dude. I, I, I refuse. Ugh. Give fucking House of the Dragon yeah. a fucking chance. It that's is why people so good. won't watch it because they're so butthurt about I, the last season of Game of Thrones. You mean somebody like Sean? No, I, I didn't say names. I didn't say names. I, I didn't say I'll any names. Say it. But no, but like that show did such a good job of just in the move. I think it was the smartest thing in the world to move through time and not try to make like story where there's no change in environment or anything happening in the universe to just create an episode. Yeah. Like, and, you know. And Matt Smith fucking brings it, man. He does. God damn it. Okay, we, and we, 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 we gotta bring up that, that dragon scene again in the last episode. Yeah. Where you got this giant ancient ass fucking dragon and a little baby dragon. And that's gotta be one of those horrific fucking shots ever filmed. It's just, that is like doom. <laughs> that is yeah. all that is. It spells doom. So, yeah. Last one I just wanna throw is, third season was this year. My favorite dark fucking comedy that I keep telling everybody to check out, but fucking Barry is oh yeah. So See, I watched fucking, the first couple episodes and it, it didn't catch me. Um, it's a of the first season. Or are you talking about this? Of the season? first season. Oh man, there's an episode. Just give him more of a chance. You get to mm. I think it's the fourth or fifth episode. See, that's right. That's, that's and yeah, that's what I tell people about Andor, and they don't want to listen to me. Yeah. So you know, but <laughs> I heard Andor described as uh, what did the dude say? He's like, it's. I just don't want A24 Star Wars. <laughs> oh, that's painful, bro. Oh, that's rough. Come on, God man. God damn it. Oh, that's, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. That's, that's what that is. A little bit. That's God damn up. it. Yeah. Uh, but one, one thing that we did, have not mentioned, and I know it was brought up before we recorded, but it may be because it was in March, and March seems like 30 years ago. It does. At this point. Uh, it's been a rough year. Got to make a mention about Peacemaker. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. God damn it. How do we fucking forget that? Yeah, Peacemaker, uh, it made, like, the dance alone, uh, we we had to wait until Wednesday came out to have a new dance to obsess yeah. over. Yeah, and, like, I added that song to my Spotify, so, like, it pops up, and I'm just like, w- Wigwam, ah, do you want to taste do it? Do you yeah. really want to really want to taste it? That's a bop, oh, that shit, man. Dude. It's a bop, dude. Yeah, and, uh, and talk about just a straight-up, like, gruesome, like, unapologetic, but Funny it, shit and heartfelt. Like it had some really heartfelt moments. Heart. Heart. The rewatch, uh, the rewatch yes. value on that because I I watch it and then I watch it again with my son and like the rewatch value is fucking tight. That oh, show yeah. is so well done. Incredible show. Um, playing as I mean as James Gunn is wont to do with like super and even Guardians of the Galaxy to a degree is like making fun of the superhero like stereotype yeah mm-hmm. with the way that he does things and he does such a good job at it of that here's this dude that's kind of a racist 
Um, but he's like, but it's because of his dad. But that's the thing is, he's not like in his heart a racist. <laughs> it's just that's how he was raised. Where when he gets exposed to other stuff, he's like, oh shit, man! Like I didn't, I didn't mean to like hurt your feelings or anything. Or, or yeah, like he doesn't yeah. understand. Yeah, he yeah. doesn't understand that that's like not okay he's, until he's bisexual racist who doesn't understand that he's also like saying sexist things to women. Like he, he's just doesn't pick up on I what he's doing. That they made him bisexual. I know. That, like pissed off a lot of like yep. the Snyderverse. Uh, dudes, and I we got to make it. Oh, we're gonna make Peacemaker woke now. Yeah, you know, sometimes you gotta suck a dick, man. Slow <laughs> down, it's fine. And vigilante, his his you know his sidekick is oh, vigilante. So, God damn! Like it. I said, I I did, and I I brought this up on the Peacemaker episode. I I liked vigilante more. I don't for some reason when he was wearing the mask than when he wasn't. I don't know. It was weird, dude. Really? Maybe when he's Deadpool in print, thing. when he's in jail with uh, his dad, it just. <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. No, that part so was, good. okay, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. Like, when you first see him and he's like, no, dude, I don't, I don't got my dick out, dude. I'm serious. Like, just check it out. Like, he's like, <laughs> but it's like when he's wearing the mask, it has a whole Deadpool effect. And I thought yeah. that was really kind of. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. You know, that's all I mean. Or, yeah, that's all. Yeah. When, and I feel like once he took the mask off, he just got, like, kind of annoying at times. I can see that after that. It, have the jail scene. And then after that, keep, keep the mask on. Yeah. Yeah. And when they're having fun, shooting up shit. And the you know at the first time you see that he's wearing the mask and they're just like blowing shit. I'm realizing by the way how good Peacemaker is as as we're talking about it. You know what the fuck I'm going to do when I get home tonight? Probably, probably watch, watch it again. Peacemaker, yeah. yeah. Touch yourself. Yeah. Watch yeah. 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 Touch yourself while you're watching Peacemaker. That's yeah. right. It's the American way. Yeah. Just I mean, screaming. Do you want to taste it? Yeah. <laughs> but what was the song that John Cena was like where dance to in his tidy whities in the first episode? That's where you stroke it. Okay. No, no. Yeah. Just let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Big hunk of man meat. This is a good spot to take our break at about fifty minutes in. Uh, oh my so god! We'll be, <laughs> oh shit! We'll be uh, back to talk about the 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 less like framed versions of best of twenty twenty two, like celebrity gossip shit and all that dumb shit. So, um, yeah, like I don't know, I'm billionaires that bought Twitter or uh, <laughs> slaps her around the world uh, that we can discuss. Oh shit! Oh, I got and, no. Uh, there's a bigger one. There's one that literally yeah. takes everything. I mean, that I mean, we we can't. I mean, even it can't be it. like a hip hop artist that said he liked Hitler. Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. Totally not. Not <laughs> even <laughs> not even <laughs> remotely about that. What are you talking about? Twenty twenty two has been weird, man. To be continued. Oh, so stick around. We'll be back in just a minute. Coming straight from the mouths of madness, I'm Lowdown. I'm F.U. Hunter. Do you love horror? We fucking do. So this is a podcast dedicated to all things in cinematic horror. We're talking movies, television, composers, special effects artists. We're going to fucking cover it. So if you love horror, embrace the madness. My name is Amy Bogard. And I'm Mike the Hobbit. And we are the hosts of Deeply Upsetting, where we use our expertise to answer your most upsetting hypothetical quandaries, such as what non wigged animal deserves wings? And what body part deserves a secret mouth? Which cryptid is the worst roommate? These questions and more that plague you will be answered on Deeply Upsetting, available anywhere you get your podcasts and at GUIPodcast.com. In a world of blockbuster movies, there is another dimension. The dimension of schlock cinema. Join us at Beautiful Disasters on a journey into the fringe territory of B-Movie Abandon. We review the flicks that are forgotten or underappreciated to give them a proper place in the annals of celluloid history. I'm the Groots. F.U. Hunter. Your guides at Beautiful Disasters. Come along with us for a fun ride. May May the the schlock be be with you. you. In a world with too many reboots and remakes, two men will stop at nothing to make it even worse. Join Mike the Hobbit and Tondi as they play by their own rules while pitching new takes on some of your favorite and least favorite films and TV shows. What podcast would dare to bring this upon the world? This is Smack My Pitch Up. Hey guys, Scotty P here with Smash... On your left. And we are the Geek Fathers. That's right, bringing all the trials and tribulations of being a geeky parent. So welcome to our world. And as always, join us or cry. We're back for the second I don't know, quarter of Geeks Under the Influence. <laughs> <laughs> Did this one a little late. Uh, <laughs> before we continue on to the, the, uh, the other parts of, uh, of GUI, we got to talk about our sponsors. First up is not Amazon. Fuck them. No, we canceled our sponsorship with Amazon. So, uh, <laughs> finally, freedom! freedom. 
But that does bring up the fact that we do have an opening for sponsorship. So if you are a fan of GUI and want to throw your hat in the ring to be a temporary or permanent sponsor of the show, we're happy to do a few episodes of sponsorship on, uh, well, the other shows. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, not, your vape emporium yeah i mean or if you want to give us like 25 grand to promote on the next episodes of gui <laughs> however have, many that may do be you, do uh, you have a new cbd startup company <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, adam and eve um uh, no uh, yeah well uh so fuck amazon uh we're done with them. Uh, <laughs> But we are not done with Tee Public, of course. Tee Public, uh, we have designs from not only just Geeks Under the Influence, the show, but the network, uh, brand Geeks Under the Influence, and all the other shows in the network, inside jokes from previous episodes, over 60 designs. We've got holiday stuff going. It is probably too late to get it before Christmas since it's this is coming out <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> less than a week before Christmas. So <laughs> if you're still shopping for order, like order online t-shirts for Christmas, Nah, bro. Like you, you waited too long. But the person you forgot, and you're doing after Christmas, or if yeah. you do something like I'm doing with some friends, where you're doing like the Secret Santa thing, but after the holidays, when yep. you don't want to add stress to the thing, and you're doing gift exchange sometime in January, still plenty of time to pick up a Geek Under the Influence design uh, shirt or mug or baby onesie if you don't like the baby very much, um, <laughs> the magnets, whatever. <laughs> Oh, a little live, live love uh, with the baby onesie. The human but, centipede yeah. uh, baby onesie, yeah. Yes. <laughs> that needs to happen. We Somebody, please. have the new pop cultist <laughs> design up on the page now, so if you wanted to get a jump on the show and blind faith it. Yeah, uh, make your baby awesome is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, then absolutely you can go for that. We also have the Renaissance Man designs where we've got Renaissance um, Man, Renaissance Woman, and Renaissance Person designs with Bren Brendan Fraser. Uh, likeness on the uh, on the store to celebrate the return of our favorite little Tarzan <laughs> <laughs> or George of the Jungle. Uh, George, yeah, I was gonna yeah, say uh, yeah. George, close yeah. enough. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Tarzan was uh, one of one of the scars guards, wasn't it? Eric yes, scars guard. Yeah. yeah, it was Eric. It's Alexander. Alexander. Yeah. That true blood, true blood boy. Yeah, the, the vampire Tarzan. The the Randall yeah. flag of the new stand series. Right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, GYPodcast.com <laughs> slash store to uh, go to our Tee Public store and check that stuff out. But on to the rest of the show. Fuck you, Amazon. We Go to hell. Go you to are, hell. He is a new. You've been waiting for I that. Knew so. he was and first up, fuck you. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. That's fuck why you. I smiled before I hit record. I was like, ooh. You were a little giddy. I was just like, all right, here a we reminder, go. reminder, I don't have to plug them. Um, so yeah, next <laughs> next part is what really fuels our uh, our not just alcoholism, but uh, uh, geek rage and excitement on these shows. We're talking about what we're drinking. Hey, we're fucking drinking. We're getting drunk. You want to know? Well, here you go. Hey, we're drinking. We're getting drunk. <laughs> anyway, yes, uh, what we're drinking, we've got a few shares here uh, for the uh, holiday season, uh, 2022 uh, kind of a hard thematic thing to do unless you're drinking like a different beer for different months of the year, which, you know, I don't have the energy after the GUI brunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's Fair. the season of festivities. Though. Absolutely. Yeah. But the day uh, yesterday before we recorded this, we did the GUI brunch that we do every year and we handed out the Danimal trophy named after the Danimal. Um, Fuck yeah, uh, Dan. Woo! Yeah. To fucking Dan. To fucking Dan. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah. this year in celebration of uh, their... Work on GY shows, not just this show, but then also becoming the new uh, co-host or what an a new co-host on Beautiful Disasters, uh, and help on other shows. Uh, Murphy Lawless, what the Danimal from uh, Fuck You Hunter was the previous year's winner. Yes, yes, yeah. well yeah. earned. It was it was well earned, and it was an awesome handoff. I don't know. It was yeah. it was good. It was great. It was, good it was stuff. a beautiful moment. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, yeah. A giant. You know what I'm trying to yeah. say. Giant group yeah. hub, with a hug with the soft, creamy center being Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> but that also means that I'm drinking a little slower today. <laughs> and uh, a lot of booze was imbibed uh, yesterday, so. Uh, As we do. But fortunately, we have some quality over quantity this evening. Uh, first up with being something low down brought for yeah. us. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to roll out the year with, as I do, East Coast Local, baby. Got Midnight Brewery out of Goochland, Virginia, which is... 25 minutes outside yeah. of Richmond. Um, they're Christmas at midnight. Uh, this is a staple for me this time of year. Since they first dropped it, I fucking love this beer. Uh, it's Yeah, it's amazing. It's like, it's like it's equal to 
Kentucky Christmas morning to me as far as like something I have to drink this time of year when it comes out. Fair enough. Which I'm surprised. I was, I, it sucks we didn't have enough time and release wise to bring that as a share. Because this year's is really good. I had it at Hardywood at Puncture Presence. Oh, man. It is. They, I think they finally figured out the big fucking brew process at the new West Creek place. Mm-hmm. It so good. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Which I'm happy for because it did not taste good last year. Well, <laughs> this, is, this is pretty good in itself. Mm. Like. Chris is a midnight. Yeah, brewery. They, they, they've got the two big beers I love by them is their Oktoberfest and their Christmas at Midnight. And they've got obviously ones in between. We've had shares. Rockville Red. Not my job. Not my job. They've got other good sessionable beers, but like they really shine at these. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, what's the ABV on that? Oh, uh, it's like 7%. So it's, okay. it's, it's not like a terrible, you know. Yeah, it's it's, it's a little higher than normal, not a, but not yeah, it's not going to Yeah, it's not, gonna, yeah, it's not, it's not, not a dick puncher. No, no, no. Not another one, though. The other one, though, we got. Yeah, that <laughs> motherfucker. That. <laughs> yeah, this was, uh, Tondi was nice enough to bring this uh, Belgian Abbey Ale here. Yeah, it's just uh, some St. Bernardus. I like Belgian ales, and I saw that they had a Christmas ale. I don't usually like Christmas stuff that much, uh, flavor-wise, but uh, I'm enjoying it, because I like Belgians. Um, I was expecting, like, uh, you know, nutmeg or something in there, and I'm not getting any of that, but uh, it just tastes like a good Belgian, so I'm all about it. I get just the subtlest hint, especially on the finish of like some spiciness mm-hmm. in there, but, but like it's, holiday it's, spices. That might just be the alcohol content. Yeah, that <laughs> might also just be the other. <laughs> fun burning. 10%. Truth. 10%. That's why I'm uh, like, that bitch, yep, that crosses that does dick kicker. Some dicks, yes. That uh, crosses in a dick kicker. Yep. Absolutely. We haven't had a dick t- kicker in a minute, actually. No, and we even longer with like what, what was the other there was like one other echelon where it was like 12. oh a castrator yeah we haven't had a castrator oh, it's been forever. a while since oh, we've yeah, also gotten yeah. old like a quad <laughs> a i forgot about the castrator, castrator too it was like 13 percent. like oh god <laughs> like a, like a that's a lead on the mic at the end of the show time yeah yep. that's a hunter and i are going to finish the episode because <laughs> yeah. hobbits passed out episode. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a justice league one yeah, yeah the justice league yeah. one oh. we'll never live down the justice league episode <laughs> hey dude i i still get shit for puking on star wars that's so true. whatever that's true. man you puked I, during the episode i got up went to the bathroom broke the door to the cabinet puked and then someone woke me up later on that night <laughs> that's, that's how that went <laughs> uh the, the the good old time oh me and my youth. or or again the early ni- days of gui nights with this motherfucker blatantly drunk and we realized that once he started oh, yeah. not understanding the pattern of the words <laughs> you're out of time uh, yeah and- uh, we're all out of time i go back and listen to that <laughs> so i'm so fucking stupid it's like he's out of time and you're out of time and you're all it's one of those time. rare occasions where like i think steven might be shit yeah that was I very was funny shit out on that episode. <laughs> and it was after we hit like i know we called you out on the episode like what are you talking about? <laughs> like just like that. Though. That's, that's the where the part. opposite like, happened. Where like I think someone's gonna have to take over. Steven's too drunk. So yeah, yeah. four nights. Yeah, I was too drunk <laughs> four <laughs> nights. That's <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it was a rough day afterwards. I'm tell you. Now I I did want to before we get done with this episode dig into just kind of the craziness of 2022 that we alluded to before yeah. we got uh, to break. But I really want to dig into um like what what craziness uh in the world did you think was like a top for you in 2022? Like what celebrity pop culture moment, you know, not floods or famine or anything like I mean, that. Not, not the I, important I think shit. that actually affects I don't, people. I don't feel like rating not t- tsunamis. Nuclear war. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Like, can we not go Let's that? not do that. But, but I mean, as far as stuff that ultimately doesn't actually matter. I'm, well, I'm going to just grab the gate, not drop with the biggest one. Can we just talk about Kanye, please? The motherfucker <sighs> is just, I feel uh, like that's a gimme. Like that, that's it is. the first thing that came. The celebrity? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's got to be. There's like I, I didn't even <clears throat> remember the Will Smith slap happened because Kanye has been so bat tits crazy. Exactly. Like I, I thought about it when uh, when we talked when we released the uh, you know the topics and I was like, oh Will Smith. I'm like, oh no, Kanye. Yeah, totally. Well, I Kanye's totally. doing the I'm gonna let you finish to society right now of like no but wait i got something else crazy to say fucker man. kanye being insane is it's not practically bigger than but but it is in in the media space it's bigger than elon musk trying to burn twitter to the ground mm. because it is so insane the interviews he's done are so insane like Dude uh, but, scares me. You always feel bad no, but, for the guy, though, because I, he's like unchecked insanity. No, but see, the thing is, though, that like bipolar doesn't make you a Nazi. 
Like, yeah, no, that's yeah. true. That's true. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. Oh, I forgot my bipolar meds. Like, so now, when you see, <laughs> Kyle, like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> fucking uh, Alex fucking Jones walking back your statement mm-hmm. is when you know that you've gone too far. Where, yeah, and that's what's so funny is that him leaning really right on all this shit and the right wing being like, oh yeah, see, we got, we got one. We yeah. got one. Like, oh like, no, 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 wait, wait, no, 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 because I think Kanye is like, yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm right wing because I'm like racist now. And everybody on the right wing is like, we got one. Oh, no, 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 no. We pretend we don't believe we that. We don't say that we out loud. We don't say that out loud. That's the, those are the parts we don't say out loud, yeah, Kanye. Come on. the quiet part loud. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to. Um, yeah. And it's just really calling attention to the fact that like, even on the Alex Jones thing, he's just like, ah, uh, no, I don't know about like not willing to ulti- like <laughs> go full. No, that's not what we do because he doesn't want to alienate his racist audience so he's like ah, ha, 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 funny joke there kanye <laughs> I, yeah I, I will say though <laughs> the kanye thing is fucking crazy we talk about the slap and that was one of those that people heard about the kanye <clears throat> shit at different times right or whatever i remember fucking showrunner page as soon as you're watching the oscars and the fucking slap and we all witnessed that shit all at the same time and went the fuck just happened i on? Don't know if I've reached for my phone faster. Than <laughs> I didn't know if anybody else was watching comment it. Comment on, on the group page or the group chat, but also on Twitter. I was like, let's go to Twitter. It was, it was super slow-mo, like a Zack Snyder film of me like clicking the fucking Twitter <laughs> app. So were you, the, were you the Wonder Woman of the slap? Well, I don't know exactly what well, that's supposed to mean. Slow Zack Snyder movement. I just picked just, her just, as no. the comparison for you. I mean, not of the slap, but, but of the of the slap response. It yeah. Wasn't, yeah. It wasn't just also, how, but it was a whole. I, I know, I know. At I, the can, same you, time, can you give me this? <laughs> can you has, give me this? <laughs> there has to be some record of DVRs being backed up a minute at that exact moment <laughs> because. <laughs> It's like in in Titanic when the person falls off the back and hits the the rudder and like yeah. flips down. <laughs> the number of times I've rewound that because um, it was like the only laugh. enticing because, part of the movie. Yeah, <laughs> when it first happened, we were all like, "Okay, Oscars, yeah." I'll, Will Smith played Ali. Now he's slapping this shit. Okay, and then you realize, oh, oh no, wait, yeah, it was this the damn wasn't, hurt around the world. Yeah, <laughs> this wasn't a bit because no. Oscar bits are pretty fucking terrible. Yeah, and this was when they cut the sound off and you see Will Smith continuously yelling, you went, keep my wife's name oh, out of your, your fucking, fucking mouth. And then, oh. thank you, overseas, where oh. all the uh, overseas uh, telecasts didn't bleep that shit out. Nope. So we got to <laughs> instantly hear what he was saying on Twitter, like, what, five minutes after the fact? So. Yeah, you know, I love that. Then the Oscars had to continue. Yeah. And then. Everybody, like everybody in the audience in the Oscars, were like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh. like I think there was even a comment of the next person that won, or the or the, uh, or the person that actually won the award that was the, Chris Love. Rock was there. Yeah, was like, yeah. So this is yeah, weird. Yeah. <laughs> and then to have him win, and they go up there, and you're just like, he's still in the building. Okay, like I mean, like i i was shocked yeah, he like, never got removed what do we do i don't know what do we do he's will smith yeah i don't know and then he ends up winning an oscar <laughs> later that night and he has yeah. to go up and then he's just doing he's this ramble shit, he's crying yeah. and rambling about like you protect apologizing to and... everybody except the guy he <laughs> physically hit sorry everybody i included everybody right i got everybody in that you know how yeah. You know, yeah. oh man i forgot to mention this or that how about just sort of when you apologize you mentioned the guy that you slapped in front of th- millions of people. Okay, that I, I would just suggest maybe you can even when even if you think that you do have a justification for your actions, um, like that there was a conversation about how uh, Jada like can't grow her hair. Yeah, yeah, and so like Will Smith it, th- believes that you know Chris Rock knows this information and is actively making fun of her like medical issue. Um, let's say that's all all the case and that's all true and everything. You can still be like, hey, that behavior isn't appropriate for this like situation. And I have to apologize for what should have been a conversation later. Yeah. Became yeah. a bigger but issue. But it he, didn't happen. He went up there and it just didn't happen. You know, like, dude. He, he on, laughed. Man. That's the thing that threw everybody off is that he laughed, looked at his wife. No, but then Jada looked at him and he was like, oh, no, I'm in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame. I, I don't want that to be the focus of this year in review no. moment. No. It's more of just that we don't, it's so rare 
for everybody to witness something at the same time. Yeah. That's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's been like Chris Rock. He witnessed his first <laughs> first literally hand. Yeah. And uh and he was surprised as I But we can talk about like, it and it's not like He was like, Oh shit, Will slapped the shit out of Will me. Will Smith slapped the shit out of me. Yeah, my, my, <laughs> my man was the audience and he had three D glasses on, so it's coming at him. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and then just you know the the Chris Rock big eye thing that he does just Wow, <laughs> yeah. still not really processing the fact that that actually happened it was incredible. But yeah, I feel like there. I feel like there's some other shit we're missing celebrity wise. Oh like no, that's... I've got a, I've got a list. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> no, thank you because again, this year's been somewhat of a tire fire. Um, there's the Johnny. Depp oh, Amber Heard. Fucking... Yes, there we go. There yeah. we go. Yeah, and that that just keeps building to be like it's that back and forth where you see people that like that they definitely don't care about the truth. They just want to be right. And they're both Where like nasty they're like, pieces Amber of shit. Piece, uh, like, it's, it's first off, Johnny Depp's a piece of shit. And then it's like, oh, actually, there's video, the video and audio and stuff that Amber Heard's actually a piece of shit. Um, well, she's leaving then, pieces of shit everywhere. Then, yeah, That's what she Amber Heard's a piece of shit. And like, well, actually, now there's <laughs> yeah. new information that actually Johnny Depp, like, adjusted some of the audio and video stuff to make it look worse than it actually was. And like, well, then it, and he keeps, they both suck. How about that? Yeah. Like they did, both fucking suck. Did she suck. take a shit on his pillow? Does that determine? I or? think that it, that did, I think it did. That, that was something that I was not expecting that. Like she didn't say of all the stuff. That was the thing. I went, wait, what? She yeah. dropped a deuce on his pillow. <laughs> <laughs> and then she bragged about it. Yeah, it's like, that, come on, man. That caught me off guard. I was thinking, like, come bottles on, being thrown, should be taught, but I took a fucking deuce on your pillow, asshole. <laughs> like, <laughs> Didn't expect that from uh, the chick from uh, Aquaman, right? <laughs> That's, I saw so many friends that were, like, trying to defend one side or the other for a certain point, and then th there was enough times where it flipped back and forth between who's actually the monster. Yeah, I've had enough. That they were like, see, no, you fully vindicated Johnny Depp, and then a month later, it was like, Johnny Depp, uh, j like, tampered with photos and stuff to make it look like a thing. Uh, you should have known better at this point. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, just... Johnny Depp already had a history of being a piece of shit. I, I feel like that part was a foregone conclusion. All we were waiting for was to find out if Amber Heard was actually a fucking monster. And she was. Yeah, she also so, is bad. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so wait, the really shitty person was with the other really shitty person. Yeah. And oh, it Benifer, didn't work yeah. out. Yeah. Speaking of yeah. shitty person with shitty person, Benefer 2.0 is another thing that happened. <laughs> yeah, that, that thing. You know, this doesn't affect me at all. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, care. Yeah. I, I don't want to really <clears throat> shit on it, because whatever. The only it, thing that's entertaining about that to me is that Ben Affleck is the saddest man in the world for some reason. And even in this marriage with his uh, impossibly hot wife, okay. and his right. his great career, and the fact that he's still in shape and fairly handsome, even though he drinks like a fish, and dude is just like the most like forlorn, morose motherfucker on the face of the <laughs> earth. Morose motherfucker. I'll, I'll yeah. say this creatively, I think it's a bad thing because he did better after they broke up. He fucking directed movies, came up. Oh no, so, they're gonna break up. He's a serial well, adulterer. And like, then he's guess gonna what? Cheat on her. Well, that's what I'm then... saying. And then we're gonna get some more good movies like The Town and shit like that because. That was his most creative was after she dumped him. And then so. Jennifer Lopez is going to have her Lemonade record yeah. that comes out. <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> everybody and wins. else will sing it for yeah. I, I got to <laughs> say, though, like, I, I mean, unless she is just batshit and you cannot fathom one more second with her to put you to, to fuck her. Like, <laughs> why the fuck would you cheat on that juicy, gorgeous fucking woman? It, it, it's, Cocaine's it's, a hell of a drug. It's dude. a compulsion. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be something. I mean, like. She it's not is, a just a, it's, hey, no, it's no it's justification. Not I'm just saying, but it's got to be something. A, well, you know, there's the the you know this because you're a man of years. You know that uh, anybody can get tired of anybody, but also in a relationship where the the power structure of the relationship is that both people are like really functionally fifty fifty. Like the denial of whatever is going to be hard. Like Jennifer Lopez be like, you know what? I just I don't feel like it, or you didn't take out the trash. And that's fine. She has enough power that she can easily carry that off. Mm. And so Ben Affleck's like, but I'm still virile and strong. Plus, yeah. There's and also famous. like, there's this line of like, why would you settle for a, a cheeseburger when you've got like a, a filet mignon at home? But like, these aren't, there aren't cheeseburgers throwing themselves at Ben Affleck. Like, both of them are getting, like, like prime wacky. rib. Getting like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I will say that they're, 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 they're getting fucking Kobe beef. Man. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, they're, they're getting, getting fucking, like, Kobe. There's some good cuts being yeah, thrown. They're getting <laughs> slung. Like, and also, yeah. I mean, I and, and this isn't justifying cheating by any stretch. Oh, no. No, 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 no. It's, no, no. It, it's important to be faithful. That's a little harder when you're, like, famous and hot. 
And so just like everybody was like, I will fuck you in, in the trash bin behind the thing, just <laughs> no, wherever. Word? Oh, cool. All yeah, right. it was like, uh, nice to meet you. In the back uh, of a Volkswagen? Like, yeah, put it in. <laughs> yeah, somewhere yeah. a place I'm <laughs> Like, you pretty much have carte blanche on whoever you want uh, as a I, sexual partner. Dang. That, knowing Thank that, you. fundamentally knowing that has to be really difficult when you're on, like, say, a press tour. For yeah. two months, yeah, and your and your wife is on a like a worldwide fucking music tour or some shit. And people somehow keep getting past security to knock on your door. Like I, security, I, why you? Well, come in. We'll we'll let get you a phone call and get you to the right call place. Your parents, yeah. or... <laughs> oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, she could be eighteen, nineteen, twenty. She'd be in college. Mm, true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, check with ben, ben Affleck is you just bring a Dunkin' Donuts uh, coffee <laughs> to him. <laughs> He'll be forever grateful. Uh, Kanye West met Maldonado. Yeah, so just a few here, um, for the most part. The that's... thing is, though, like one. Oh yeah, the, the Queen died. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, the Queen died. Oh, like, oh, yeah. Whatever. But no, but like, and that even speaks to this. We, we just said, but like the one, in, the one in the middle, the second one we talked about, Amber Heard's lineup, that took up so much of our year, as far as celebrity. It's time nonsense. wise, yeah. That trial seems time like wise, yeah, forever. Just forever. I mean, it was a top tier story, but Ezra Miller's fucking breakdown lost his yeah. fucking I mean, mind, dude. Lost and his I mean, you got mind. a movie that's just sitting on the shelf, done, millions so, of dollars, and just they're like, sitting there. "What so the Ezra fuck do Miller's we do? Thing, what is the actual?" Because that's one of those things that just through the COVID era, I feel like Ezra Miller has been doing like weird, dark, evil stuff for like four years now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, he, he but, kidnapped that girl in 2019 or something or whatever. Well, he attacked some chick, like, at one of the cons, and, like, he smiles. Yeah. And then, yeah, like, that the, was in, like, his bodyguard. Yeah, but his bodyguard's like, let's get you off the fan. See, like, And people joke about, like, DC has bad luck with, like, Amber Heard, and where they're having to, like, redo a whole bunch of shit. And now, like, Ezra Miller, where they can't really redo the Flash movie without the Flash. <laughs> That's so sick. Um, and they're like, they have bad luck. No, I just think Disney has better, like, assassins and handlers. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> you know that, that, that fucking... I, I th Robert Downey Jr. probably eats people. Oh, you just, yeah. Like, he, he's, he's a human cannibal. Brie Larson's killed somebody. Brie, yeah. Brie Larson has murdered hobos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> You know, the, you know, there's it's some just weird, it, weird it dark says. secret shit going on. Like Tom Tom <laughs> Holland is actually a lizard person. Yeah, he's the last studio that still has studio fixers. Yeah, there's fixers. That, they're just you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> but Disney's been around long enough and been successful enough with Free these... Larson kills hobos. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the episode. Is Free Larson kills hobos. We, we might get sued by Free Larson. She is that yeah. chick. Uh, Geese of Lewis has a season. I mean, it's, it'd be almost worth it for the for the. Uh, I mean, press. It's, 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 it's like. Uh, uh, just kidding. We're continuing to do the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna? What, what uh, like? What are you gonna get from us? Like, yeah. <laughs> but no, they need to go ahead and replace Ezra Miller's face with Tig Notaro and then just be about <laughs> yes! their business. See, you know where yes, DC would have wouldn't have to worry about this at all if they just went ahead and tried to work out Gre with having yeah. Greg Gustin be in the fucking Flash because he's awesome. Oh, you mean the guy from the show? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know, like, already plays the Flash. Yeah, yeah that yeah. guy. Um, that guy. Yeah, him. Like nah, you know? <laughs> it's not nothing could happen from this Ezra I'm, guy. I'm sorry, I, I lo logic. I don't know. Greg I don't Gustin know. Is amazing. He's he is amazing awesome in his Peter Parker version of the Flash. <laughs> and True. I, I, I love yeah. him too. I think he's incredible. But that's not how the industry works at all. No, it doesn't mean the industry's smart. That's it. I just I want to like pick out what deep dark secret shit all the Avengers have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where, like, Besides Paul Rudd, Paul Rudd is perfect, and you can never tell me any differently. Uh, uh, uh okay. So, <laughs> okay. Chris Hemsworth, no, uh, no Paul Rudd just has a portrait of himself that looks really gross up in an attic somewhere, and that's... But if you open the door behind the portrait, then you'll find Paul Rudd's pizza restaurant that has kids underneath the restaurant. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this just in. <laughs> what? Yeah, little did we know that Paul Rudd owns a little pizza restaurant in D.C. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Paul Rudd was at the heart of every Q conspiracy, and we never knew it. Paul Rudd opens up, like, stocks for some secret company called Adrenochrome. <laughs> mm. and, uh, Paul Rudd is Q, actually. <laughs> <laughs> He's the JFK Jr. we've all been waiting. Well, he is. Right? And if we paid enough money, we could be verified as Paul Rudd and make those announcements <laughs> thanks to how Twitter right? now yeah, works. Absolutely. So. Yeah, this Just is throw one your of cash the more together. Pressing things of the year, but yes. on a personal level. <laughs> yeah, the the Twitter thing is fucking buck wild, and it was called out pretty early on with the Twitter thing that like a lot of people expect he's intentionally tanking Twitter. 
yeah to write yeah. it off and mm-hmm. like actually make a profit from his taxes on, on the i mean like producer style like this is a fucking mel brooks production um i don't it's either that or he is like how has he lasted this long uh, like without I mean, doing something this he's fucking been stupid out of this touch is for unintentional i mean i mean he he's not he's not very in touch with i mean this is just I've been following the Twitter files drops that he's like exposing all the corruption behind Twitter. And it's so anticlimactic it's every regular time. regular business practice. It's like yeah. they, they just went back and forth and this person went to this person. And they decided to block this really, really fucked up tweet. Uh, okay. So what's the, oh, that's it. That's the, that's the bomb drop. Okay. Yeah, great. Tweet. <laughs> cool. Block the tweet. Yeah. This person that has made like death threats to people, they decided to to block and like end her account. Um, but this time she wasn't as threatening. But bro, like she threatened to murder people. I don't know yeah, what. Yeah, <laughs> like, plus, yeah. my that. Upset. Meanwhile, like the you know verification shit, and you've got companies losing a fuck ton of money because people can just say they're that and then make announcements. I mean, was it the insulin company that like oh lost so much money? Yeah. 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 Yep. That's kind of dangerous. It's- insulin yeah my favorite recently was that insulin no like i mean it's like <laughs> there was somebody there was somebody that was tracking the real light real movements of the elon musk jet right and so he got banned and he got taken off and stuff i'm not arguing that you know what that that could be potentially a, a safety issue or whatever i think he overreacted for sure with that a little bit but like if you block the account okay fine that's fine i'm not you know that i see that's fair <clears throat> um but the fact that he's preaching free speech the whole time while he's doing it is fucking obnoxious but then also any reporters that were reporting on the story of the dude being blocked by Elon Musk got blocked. Like yeah. got their no, accounts a- Every move he's made is purposely anti-free speech uh, for whatever reason. I don't know if it's a, a specific ideology that he's glomming onto in the modern time or if he is trying to tank Twitter on purpose, yeah. as you said. But uh, yeah, it, he is not making any moves that are like... Uh, good for the the idea of free speech well then there was the twitter spaces thing that happened where mm. apparently there was something in twitter where even if you were, your account was removed or blocked you still had access to the twitter spaces thing so a bunch of journalists got together blocked and unblocked journalists to talk about what the fuck is even going on here on twitter elon musk rolls into this chat of like 30 40 journalists that are talking about journalism in an age where twitter is owned by elon musk and <laughs> He's asked like three questions, the third one being relating to like, you're talking all this shit about like how bad Twitter was for hiding this Hunter Biden's laptop pics of his own dick and stuff that was happening and uh, and how bad it was. How is this different? Like, how is this not censorship? Uh, but that is censorship. And he then left the call. He couldn't answer any of the questions. So and then and then took down all of Twitter spaces. Because he was trying to figure out how to remove the journalists that were on that call that had been blocked, and the team that normally handled that had been the fired. Fire, yeah. Whoops! So <laughs> he had to take down the whole Twitter Spaces for most of the day to get that tweak fixed before putting it back up. The fuck? Yeah, because yeah. the team that handles everything has been fired. Mm. <laughs> it's yeah. Just... It's like it, 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 <clears throat> he literally gave the prime example of why whenever a company buys a section of a business or some large quantity of something they at a minimum appease the current masses of employment because if they leave they can't run shit and then the then the then what they just bought is useless because they can't run it (laughs) like so no money sorry yeah i don't don't know like if if he was if he had just invested his own money and this was just some kind of i'm an agent of chaos and a bored rich person this is how i get i can jerk off and come or whatever i could understand (laughs) that but it's not just his money that's invested he's got to you know he's got to pay people back for the money they invested in his uh, he's got to show profit so i don't understand i don't know i don't understand what he's doing I love Careful that, what you wish for. What the fuck? Yeah, I, I pulled up Elon Musk's Twitter, and I love that this, I don't know if it was mentioned or not on the on the episode, he did a poll, should he step down as head of Twitter, he will abide by the results of the poll, and currently, uh, close to 60% of uh, it is yes. yes he, he also should. doesn't, he also, oh no, it's his final results, so that's the final yeah. results. Okay, so. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, like at the very bottom by the votes, it says, of that post, it says final yeah. results. Yeah, final results, so yeah, I guess he's going to step down as uh 
Seventeen point uh, <laughs> five million people voted in, <laughs> and and, almost sixty percent. Yes. Yeah, and then the next result is response is him whining as the saying goes: "Be careful what you wish for, as you might get it." <laughs> it's just well, the speculation I heard was that he put that up because he, he had already planned uh, whatever it was going to look like. So his those who is... want power are the ones who least deserve it. What the fuck? This guy. He, yeah, his his post, and that's why I'm bringing this up because we're right at the tail end of the episode, and at the tail end of the episode, we do a little segment that I thought would be fun using uh, Elon Musk's tweets for. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So, all right. All right. Of course, we're talking about uh, a little uh, end of the episode bit that we call making a drunken scene. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, merrily. Yes. Yes. Good place. Uh, good <laughs> Where's this Elon Musk? <laughs> <laughs> no. Tuppence for a swap. <laughs> Uh, Musk so is gonna, an embarrassment. I'm going to scroll all through. If there's, if there's a tweet that you see that you really want to do, uh, your, I don't know, best Elon Musk impression or whatever how whatever voice. Use, how, what, what is an Elon Musk impression? I don't know. I, I don't, don't even know. Yeah, I don't know. He I just sounds he, he sounds confused most yeah. of the time. Like I don't <laughs> know if that's an actual accent of just confused, but. You, you can't really make fun of his, uh, his presentation because he, I think he's like, like hardcore autistic. Yeah, he is. Um, and so, yeah, that's... <laughs> is it let's really? not do that. Is he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, no idea. Yeah, very, very much. So is that... So is that... Is any of that coming to account for his actions with all this? Is the fact that he doesn't maybe fully understand? No, he's he's fully an adult who's responsible for the moves that he makes. He he, under, he understands what he's doing. Mm. He just... It, he's he's Trump-asking that he doesn't have to have accountability because he's a billionaire. Mm. So he just do shit. Yeah, I get that part. I just, I just didn't know if, what? like... <laughs> What are you doing? Sorry, the handgun with the astronaut. He's got all kinds of memes that you're like, eh. It's like him carrying the sink into Twitter's offices. Uh, okay. I mean, he's literally like just this fucking adult man that's a troll, an internet troll that yeah. has billions and billions of yeah. dollars. Yeah, he's getting off on just, Ugh. Yeah. I used to eat people, but I got bored of that, so good. That's how I know we're in the worst timeline, because a guy that is basically an internet troll is in charge of our rocket ships and <laughs> yeah. one of the Jesus. largest forms of social media communication yeah. in the world, um, and he's in charge. Yeah. Also, on uh, he, uh, until this, he was on track to be the world's first trillionaire. Not anymore. No, I said, I, I said prior to this, yeah, yeah, for sure, he was yeah. on track to being the world's first trillionaire. I'm too busy running Twitter, so now Herschel Walker will be in charge of SpaceX. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. Right. <laughs> oh, was it, was it explain space, we gotta talk about werewolves and vampires. <laughs> I didn't know werewolves could kill vampires. I didn't know. I didn't know. Oh. And then your kids knock on the door, and you're like, nobody's home. Don't move, honey. Just pretend we're not here. Hey, has anybody actually watched, though, the, again, in front of, you know, his followers the whole breakdown of Fright Night. I mean it's Fright Night. He's just oh, yeah, about Fright it's Night. Incredible. It's amazing. They just sit there and like I've watched cut versions of it and they're like, we had to cut some of this out because it just kept going on. Get but if you're in that crowd speech, so that's something I guess. Yeah. So this is the one I'm gonna do here um for Elon Musk. This is from December fifteenth uh Elon Musk <laughs> Twitter uh drunken scene. Here we go. If anyone posted real-time locations and addresses of New York Times reporters, FBI would be investigating. There'd be hearings on Capitol Hill, and Biden would be giving speeches about end of democracy. <laughs> That's a thing. Yeah. yeah. That just, just happened. <laughs> I love the, the like, whataboutisms shit, and the, like, if this, then this bullshit of, like, no, but if it was this way around, then it'd be different. Fuck you. What That's about, it. what about, what about? Yeah, it, it's so fucking annoying. All right, let's see if we can find. Oh, There's a lot of retweets. Yeah, and anytime he gets in hot water, he just retweets a bunch of shit about SpaceX. It's so fucking funny. You can, like, time it. I guess I'll do this one. Yeah, do it. All right. <laughs> Any account doxing real-time locations info of anyone will be suspended, as it is a physical safety violation. This includes posting links to sites with real-time location info. Posting locations someone traveled to on a slightly delayed basis isn't a safety problem. So it's okay. <laughs> Great. Great. 
Yeah. Solid. Let's see. All right. Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> it's regular. All right. Um, <laughs> should I step down as head of Twitter? I will abide by the results of this poll. Lovely. Yes. Lovely. Yes. 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 True, like, evil villain energy. I thought it was a little shock hard for a second. Mm. There were a few things going on. <laughs> Oh, this is where he threatens uh, yeah, to put Fauci in yeah, jail. Yeah, here we go. I, I want to go where's that Where's one. that? The December 12th, like, uh, it's, it's bratty. Under pressure from hundreds of activist employees, Twitter deplatforms Trump, a sitting U.S. president, even though they themselves uh, acknowledge that he didn't violate the rules. <laughs> uh, and I read all of these Twitter files, and this one I remember specifically is that what they suggested is that uh, they were giving different rules to Trump being a lot actually easier on him than other people. Because yeah, he's and so th- sitting president. Like, right? it, yeah, was a, it was a judgment call on some of these uh, tweets. And so yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a nothing no, burger. That was, it, that, that, but that's a prime example of just how much of a fucking whiny little bitch, brat, fucking, ah, whatever. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, where, you know where I'm going. Totally you know where I'm going. It, yeah, I'm surprised it took that long to get to one, though. It was only December 12th, but I figured there would have been one, like, yesterday. <laughs> or like, yeah. It's just another reminder, and this is happening over and over again, whether it be political people or uh, people in the industry that are too big for their britches and don't have any kind of real, realistic view of the world, where they think if you're shitty and rich, you can just say stuff and people will, like, get behind you and support you. But, like, no. Yeah, some will, for sure. Absolutely. You're having yeah. the... I mean, you still have that. The disgusting Elon Musk fans that are like, yes, Elon. Yeah, Elon, you're right. You're Let's, so right. You're so right. Glaze Let's, me like a donut. I mean, it's, you <laughs> know what? We need to change the rules so Elon can run for president. I've seen a lot oh, of that. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, fuck no. Fuck no. We thought, dude, we thought Trump was bad. Musk? <laughs> no. Holy yeah. shit. But like, dude, that's like a whole level uh, I don't even this, want to think about. Like, that there's no, there's nothing behind uh, a lot of the time these, these people's like, views on things besides I'm allowed to do whatever I want to. And so when that falls apart, they're surprised. It's like, yeah, you're like taking away people's like ability to, you know, communicate with each other, uh, the people's fundamental human rights in some, in yep. some instances. And then you're surprised that people are mad about it. You know, what's crazy though. Fuck? And this isn't, this is no way like anything slightly uh-huh. remotely positive to uh, Musk. It's like we failed as a society when that, is the way that people were able to communicate with loved ones and family too. It's like, uh, True. it sucks. It's supposed to be an opportunity. It's, it's all supposed to be an opportunity. It is also it's supposed to be, but let's say we, who bastardize most things that are supposed to be good. Well, we, the, the people that are interacting with the things, because people yeah, do that. But exactly. Yeah. That's, what, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like we, but we also establish what's good. So, well, you know, th- I think it was, uh, George Carlin talked about this decades ago about uh 24 hour news channels is that the problem with those channels is that you have these two boxes that pop up and there's a guy that's like a scientist that has been doing his job for like 30 years and that's like his entire life is to know that this one tiny thing this one type of science this one very specific study thing that he's devoted his entire life to and that's like he kn- he is the person in the entire world that knows the most about this thing and then you've got this fucking wacko in the other box yeah. that just decides that that's not true. And they put them up there like they're equal. And they're like, okay, scientists, this thing, blah, 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 blah. if we don't do anything about this, then, you know, there could be a lot of lost life. And okay, what, what about you, Mr. Crazy McJones? I'm like, oh, I think that he's part of a space alien yeah. conspiracy with the lizard people. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's interesting. And they treat it like there's an equality and, and there. your opinion is as valid as yep. anybody else. So you mean, you mean don't look up? Yeah, like, basically. Mean, Perfect example. But that's, that's what we're running into with the internet is that, yeah, with something like Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, there is a level playing field between celebrities and nobodies, you know, people that just regular schmoes like us, really. And as far as how, how much you can achieve reach. Yeah. And the problem with that, though, is that there's this immediate animosity towards people that have a natural popularity to start. I see it in podcasting all the time, too. Well, they're celebrities, so of course they're going to be successful with podcasting right out of the gate. Why are you mad about it then? If you know that, then why are you? And that's not always the case. Yeah, but I mean... but like don't don't take it as a chip on your shoulder thing, man. Like yeah. it's not it's not it's not a thing against you. 
Yeah, it's their, just their the success nature of, doesn't affect your success. And, you know, they put a lot of work into the initial success they got, probably. So maybe that's yeah, more carryover. Likely, that's the thing. It's like they 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 did the work in that other level yeah. that before they reached so, here. And that's what's happening with Twitter is that there's, you know, there's the Elon Musk that supposedly are taking down, like, the, 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 the natural order of things. Um, and so all the douchebags fall behind. It was the same thing with Donald Trump. And unfortunately... Same thing with fucking Snyder, where there was like the PG-13 standard for fucking superhero movies, and DC started pushing an edgier, darker mode, and they got Snyder to be involved with that. And this isn't shitting on Snyder, this isn't sn- shitting on either even Warner Brothers, but then it's like, oh, he's going against the status quo, so I support him for everything that he does, uh, and become simps for fucking uh Snyder, when mm-hmm. that, or, or Snyder, that's what, not what he was planning on doing. That's mm-hmm. he, That's... He wasn't trying to subvert the status quo. He just likes slow motion and blood. He, he like, likes slow it's... motion and hero shots. Yeah. More than anybody in the history of movies. <laughs> and... He likes slow motion like J.J. Abrams like likes lens flares. Lens flares. Yeah. 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 I, was gonna, I was silly thinking the exact same <laughs> right? thing. But, you know, they, they create these false idols of, like, subverting the dominant paradigm in society. And it's not true. It's usually just selfish douchebags that are doing whatever they want to without consideration of other people. And uh, they're aggrandized and made hero worshipped out of, um, and then it falls apart, and then everybody is surprised. It's it, uh, it's the idea that just because you have a difference of opinion, uh, it needs to be taken as just as valid as any other opinion out there in the world. When the Elon Musk don't know how to run a Twitter, hell, he doesn't know how to run a Tesla. He got the other people to make decisions for him to make him successful. Yeah, that's what happens when you're like, like not just rich? What 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 happened to the wealthy? response to somebody that? was the guy in the other box that was just a whack job where it's like, well, that's just like uh, your opinion, bro. What happened to that response to that shit? Well, because you know what every saying? opinion where it's like, is valid now. Like, <laughs> that's the argument I see all the time with something was like, well, you you can't just discredit my opinion because it's different than your opinion. Your opinion is insane. No, that's what I'm saying. Also, it's like, uh, bro, says that the earth like, is hollow. Also, yeah. also yeah. Whose, whose opinion is more entertaining? And that's a sad thing, yeah, yeah, is right. that yeah. the crazy guy, that's the look at the crazy fact. guy, mm-hmm. and eventually, you know what, some people, the Trump factor, where some people go, maybe the crazy guy, because he's entertaining, is right. And you go, yeah, but yeah. you have no bias to, based on that, but he's funny, he's yeah, it's, entertaining, it's like, it doesn't matter. It's funny you mentioned, you know, hollow courts, like, yeah, like, somebody comes out with a hollow earth theory where fucking Godzilla and King Kong are fucking battling and there's bones and shit and like, yeah, that, that happened. Yeah, that there's happened. a movie now, about it. Now, that's a movie. That's a movie. Exactly. There's a movie about it. But everyone's like, uh-huh, see, there's a movie about it. See, see? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Fuck out of here. still flat earth <laughs> people. I mean, yeah. come on. I mean, like, how? How? Oh, how? Where yeah. we are with satellites and everything. Like, yeah, but it's a flat earth. We live in a society. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just, this is a crossover spot your pitch up. Yeah, in right. a world, in a world, <laughs> in a world. Um, we, but literally, we live in a society where there was a fake account called "Birds Aren't Real" with the idea that like birds are actually surveillance drones for the government. All birds. Oh my, yeah, and yeah. oh god, Those it's fucking such a pigeons. hilariously stupid like conspiracy theory that it was a fun satirical page for them to do until people started believing it. Um, mm-hmm. And that it's not a huge number of people that believe it, but some people are like, but how do you know, though? Yeah. And that's the argument that conspiracy theorists sometimes use with this shit is like, but how do you know that it's not true? I guarantee you it's not fucking true. I'm going to stand on a fucking, I, I'm going to go out on right, a limb. We're right in the direction okay. of idiocracy. We're yeah, so like, close, man. Gatorade, bro. Yeah. It's Gatorade. So you can't just discredit somebody else's theory just because you don't agree with it. That one I can't. Electrolytes. Can. It's that electrolytes. one I definitely, <laughs> your, your, your specific, your, your thing, yes, I will. But when does... The talking rational and making sense become boring. What, like, I mean, the whole thing is in in idiocracy. He tried to put. He's like, this guy sounds boring. I don't care. And like, like, it's when is that? Like that? But is that? But saying, it's is getting that, that not part bigger. Of it? Is it's that getting not part of worse. It? Well, and also, it's getting to where people start believing the shit that they're making fun of. Like that's what happened with 4chan and the alt right. Yeah, is that it was a bunch of 4chan like fucking trolls that started just posting racist memes to each other. And then started playing it being an alternate right wing and then leaning into that satire to the point where they started believing their own bullshit and becoming an actual movement of Nazi sentiment. Oh, no, Uh, we indoctrinated ourselves. Yeah, they literally (laughs) convinced themselves that they were Nazis. Self-indoctrination. Yeah, that's a fucking thing that exists now. Um, Oh, man. It's it's buck wild to see and... 
the thing is, especially maybe especially when you indoctrinate yourself with your own satirical take on a thing, real hard to convince yourself otherwise of uh, that mm. that's not correct. That's right. I mean, on the plus side, uh, the the whole Musk debacle has given us a plethora of new social media networks. Like, for instance, you can find me on uh, Mastodon and yep. Hive and uh, Quorum and Pow Wow and Key Party. So Key you, Party? Yeah, you look up <laughs> Jonathan Blade on any of those sites, boom, I'm right there. I will be looking up Key Party specifically. Key Party! Uh, okay. for... <laughs> I, I'm on Mastodon. I have not done exploration on the other stuff quite yet, but what I'm finding is smaller groups. Like, I'm on a couple new Discord channels that are a, a lot of Discord fun. Discord is actually the way to, like, uh, for a network. Discord is the way to go. You you have a heavily curated audience who ha actually has an interest in interacting. Mm -hmm. It's not good for promotion, but I think as like an entity, an existing entity, Discord is the way to go. I think I'm going to redo that. I tried to open up Slack for uh, GUI showrunners and like regular panelists and stuff, and nah, <laughs> <laughs> no one's doing shit on that. So, but uh, yeah, I, I guess that's the end of this episode. Uh, us. Talking about 2022 and being old men about and things it. that are important to old Hold people. Hold on, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know it's going to be one of our biggest disappointment, real quick, oh, pop yeah. culture-wise, Halloween ends. Man, what? I thought we were, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not letting that get away. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you, you five, six team writing pieces of shit. <laughs> fuck. God damn it. All right. All right, we're good. And oh, God. <laughs> Only one. That's, that is not uh, nearly as much of a disappointment as my man Taika taking a oh. fucking L with Love and Thunder. That's dude, definitely second dude, to bro, Halloween that's, Ends. That's, is, we didn't that even touch that movie. A, that, such yeah. a fucking oh. disappointment. I realize how much I did enjoy it because it's been free. It's been on Disney+. I'm not, Plus, I'm not, not rewatching that movie. I'm, I'm not rewatching re that movie. Yeah. Watch it. That I'm, is I'm, a tire fire of a movie. I'm not rewatching that. I rewatched Halloween Ends for... Mouths of Madness, and that was rough, and I had to do that. I realized I don't have to watch Love and Thunder ever again. Yeah. Okay, we are mm. way, way over time. <laughs> uh, let's uh, button this up. But yeah, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Geeks Under the Influence, our last episode of 2022. Not our last episode uh, ever, um, or of regular releases. We are going to be doing our final free play uh, episode of regular releases at the beginning of 2023. Uh, to you know, shoot the shit and talk about whatever, and uh, and say goodbye, and then occasionally having um a, a few releases a year after that. But uh, this is our last of 2022. I want to thank everyone here and all of our other panelists from Geeks on the Influence for a great brunch. Uh, emotions were had. Uh, there was yeah. celebration in the air. It was a great fucking time. It was lovely, and uh, it's because Do we you got want to put that picture up on the page or. Um, well, I'm going to double check about the video uh, before th that gets posted, just to make sure that everybody involved is okay with that being posted. But like, there's pictures that for sure uh, we're going to put up on our social from brunch. I've been just too hungover today to do anything <laughs> on social media. But uh, yeah, we'll check that stuff out and uh, we'll find you next time for the last main episode yeah. of uh, Geeks Under the Influence. Uh, Ugh. But there will be a bit of a break through the holidays. and Yeah, we got stuff. holiday shit to deal with first. So, uh, but. Check us out probably sometime around mid-January, I think, mm, yeah. when we're looking to release. So uh, so we'll see you then. I'm Mike the Hobbit. Low down. Join us or die. Shut the fuck up, Hobbit. Join us or die. Join us or die. Or I will swallow your soul. GUIPodcast.com <laughs>